So I'm using charcoal because charcoal is uh, very black. And so when you're doing the light stuff, you have to be very, very gentle how you touch it. I've talked about a few ways of starting a drawing. So giving myself some boundaries there. I'm putting him a little bit off to one side so I'm not drawing him straight on. He's almost straight on, but so this is going that way a bit. So the way I tend to work is through constant correction. I just lay something down and I know that it's very rare that I can just put down something perfect. Yeah, I'm just not perfect. <laughs> I put down something, something to start with, but then I, I sort of say, that's not right, that's not right, and I'll change, and I'll change. So I'll keep changing as I go. Right. Next one I'm going to do now is sort of squint at it and sort of get an idea where the shade is. So some people, like I say, the smudges and the scribblers, there's those who use tone, there's those who use line. Using line is very helpful in a teaching sense when I see students use line because it's like um, if somebody does a tonal drawing and they do it perfect, uh, and then they show the teacher and they think, well, how'd they get to that? It's like doing a good maths problem. You think, well, what's the mathematics behind that? You don't see any of the working out. But when you see line work, you tend to see working out. And it's also handy when you're looking at artists. Other artists that use lots and lots of line, it's almost like they're giving out the secret of how they work that out. All right, so I'm going to use a bit of line here. So can we see how I got to there? Was that easy so far? Yeah. Would anyone have any problems getting to that point? Because I don't remember, you know, this is the corrections yet. So it's just roughing down some rough lines. Okay. And it just comes with practice too. But like you can practice, practice, but if you're practicing the wrong thing, it just takes you a lot longer. Now, what I said about values here, I've got to be really careful to leave the whites, although I can erase to get those as well. I have a need of rubber, which will take out charcoal. So erasing is an option. Right. thing I've done wrong is probably that cheek. So now I'm starting to look at correcting things. That cheek wants to come in a bit. It's 
this is what sort of happens, you're drawing along and you think, oh, gee, I've done that wrong. So you go do it in correction. But I'm not going to pick up the eraser until I'm closer to the end of this because uh, erasing is not usually about making corrections, it's usually about putting light in a grey area. Everyone's so quiet, they don't want their voice on video. There, can you see what's going on over there? Right. So slowly taking form. It's almost sort of biographical way. So, oh well. good beard's a good beard, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe that's why I warmed to this one. I'll have to do Mary the next time I do a demo. If I'm doing one about Mary, it's probably going to be probably about the opposite of what I'm doing. I'm trying to do something really strong here. And with Mary, I probably want to do something that looks gentle. It's interesting that the beard actually goes right down here into his hand there. I'm actually holding the beard and then the beard goes down there. So he's actually more impressive than me because he's holding his beard with two hands in the original sculpture. Uh, which is unfortunate. This plaster has been vandalised. I'm not sure how far it went down, but uh, yeah, you all know the story about what happened to these guys. Uh, does anyone remember Fred Fulton? Yeah, he yeah. saved him from an art school, they throwing him out and he... Yeah, the, that's right. Uh, somebody in a postmodern fit decided to take a hammer to all these beautiful um, casts and he rushed in and saved as many as he could but they knocked the horns off Moses and a bit of his beard off, they smashed the head off, you know, the... Venus, and so yeah, Fred came in, just grabbed as many as he could from a skip and uh, rescued skip. them. <laughs> yes. Where were they getting thrown out from? Ah, uh, this is Hobart. Phil Steins. Well, like I said, it was in a fit of postmodernism that they thought this is all old stuff. We're not going to teach our students old techniques. We're just going to teach them modern art and so. Oh, right, okay. Somehow the two aren't connected. Unfortunately, they. Yeah, well, this is right, you know. The most modern artists in the 20th century all had traditional training. They were still struggling to get nudes out. People mm. still find nudes offensive. The painting nudes, 2000 BC. Okay, so. I'm going to use the eraser here to take out a bit here. There. So I'll work on the nose a bit more. I'm quite relaxed now. Does anyone ever feel stressed when they're drawing? 
Yeah? Sometimes. So what do you think the stress is? Uh, anxiety about not knowing how to draw something. Okay. Is it... Would it be worried about the expectation you've put on yeah, yourself? Yeah, it'd be your own expectations. Yeah. Okay. When there are time restraints, there's a lot of space. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's because I'm a bit like a drill sergeant sometimes. Yeah. But when you... Uh, when you do anything, you really have to enjoy it. You have to try and find a point where you enjoy something, and then you'll probably end up making it a habit, because you get rewarded. Uh, if you don't get the reward, you're not going to make the habit. And so I guess the payoff when you're drawing, sometimes it's like, yeah, you're sort of, you're enjoying the actual process. Um, sometimes the payoff is you enjoy the end product. Uh, I tend to, I guess earlier on, like your kid, you draw something and everyone goes, oh, that's good, and you, that's, that's your reward. Yeah. Uh, but there is a point where you get to where you just enjoy the yeah. thing of just drawing. It's like you don't, when you don't have to think too much about it, it becomes very enjoyable. There. Slip in. I find also it's like you know when I'm carving lino that's really enjoyable. It's just hours and hours or painting some fine detail thing. It's hours and hours of just this repetitive stuff where you can just sort of relax and listen to audio books and it's just yeah. I haven't really got into meditation, but I imagine that's probably, you know, what people are getting out of it. I just sort of like the idea of producing, because when I'm... I don't, don't know, I think I tried meditation once and I thought, gee, I wish I, I could be home drawing. <laughs> and so I can be like that. I could go to a party and think, gee, I could be home drawing. One doesn't have to be inanimate in order to meditate, though. No, well, maybe it is uh, One can contemplation. One drawing as a form of meditation. Yeah. It's, it's getting yourself into that spot where you're untroubled by things, isn't it? It's, um, as you said, you know, where you fall into a relaxed state of mind and the creativity flows. It's the same thing as finding yourself in a Buddhist mantra, I think. Yeah, and I think uh, like Tom Huck said that when he's working in a space like this and he's wood carving, mm. that I've got control over this space. Yeah. You know, this is what I've got control over. And yep. he said, the rest of the world will be going to hell in a handbasket, yeah. but I've got control over this. And he's, in, he's just removing himself from all the troubles of the world and he's just in this one spot. And so drawing can be like that too, painting can be like that. Well, those sand, uh, sand drawings by the Buddhists, you know, like uh, the, the temple sand drawings. I don't know if you've ever seen them. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, they do them. They're huge. Half a dozen fellas spend like three, four days constantly on yeah. them and then they just open they the temple doors and uh, yeah. blow it all away. Exactly. And so, yeah, and that's probably a really good example because that is an example of the process of doing it or the act of making it mm. is more important than the finished product. Right, yeah. So, sticking a bit of eye detail in here now. Actually, that looks looking more out that way. These piercing eyes. Does he have irises? I don't think he does, does he? Aren't they just smooth? <laughs> just little dots. Yeah. Michelangelo used to like carve a little circle in and then just um, just you can actually sort of see them engraved around the edges which makes when you're drawing translating it into 2D just sort of looks like these piercing eyes you really did these casts in the first place were they students were they or? it probably come from a museum I guess I really don't know the answer to that one I would have imagined that they're 
because they're about the right size. Yeah. Uh, except for Venus, that's being obviously made. Mm -hmm. So some one has yeah thought yeah we'll make cars. Should be a good idea. You wouldn't be able to go and take them from the original, though, would you? Um, some might have. Yeah, actually, yeah, the Madonna and Child over there is probably from a cast from the original, because it's like dinosaur bones. They did cast a lot of these things. Oh, they cast the cast. Make yeah, a cast could be a cast, cast of the yeah. cast. That's right. All right, need to work on this bit here a bit. Make it stronger in there. The nice thing about charcoal is you can just sort of like tend to press harder and you get darker. So you do get almost a black, which is nice. So is there any questions? Is there anything you learn from this? You can do it, Bill. Anyone can do it. <laughs> exactly right. What one man can do, so can another. I'll just wisp that down because I know what the original sculpture looks like. Um, Just... 